All right, exercise 13.1, net present value method, learning objective one. The management of Origami Company, a wholesale distributor of beachwear products, is considering purchasing a $30,000 machine that would reduce operating costs in its warehouse by $5,000 per year. At the end of the machine's eight year useful life, it will have no scrap value. The company's required rate of return is 11%. Required, number one, determine the net present value of the investment in the machine. All right. Well, you know I like my timeline, right? So here's the timeline, and we have on time t equals zero, an outflow of $30,000 to purchase the machine. After eight years, notice we have no cash inflow, zero salvage value. Our ROI is 11%. And I've modeled the cash, uh, the savings as cash inflows because if we're not spending it, it's the same as bringing it in, right? So there's eight years of $5,000 of cash flow. So we need to find the net present value. So in Excel, what we would do in one cell is equals negative 30,000. In the cell below it equals net present value, open bracket, 0.11 for our rate. And then we would enter $5,000 for the full eight, eight years. And of course, you'll just sum those two cells and we will get negative four, two, six, nine. I leave it to you to do this in Excel um, because only by actually doing it will you remember how it's done as opposed to me showing you on screen how it's done. I gotta leave something for you, right? What if you wanna, uh, you just use your calculator. Well, we can model the cash flows on top like a bond, a bond that has a future value of zero. It has eight periods. The, your IY assignment key will have 11 to it. And we have a payment of 5,000. And all we want to do now is compute PV. And we will get negative 25 730.61. We'll round that off in a second. Now that's just the present value of the future cash flows. We want net present value. So net present value equals our 25,000 that we got, 730, let's round it to 731, minus the $30,000 cash outflow. So there's our inflows minus our outflows equals negative 4269. So whether you use Excel or whether you use a calculator, you'll come to the same, the same uh, result. Part two, what is the difference between the total undiscounted cash inflows and cash outflows over the entire life of the machine. And this is actually, you might look at that question and think, what's the point? Because it's actually a good question to highlight something. Have a look at this. How much cash are we gonna get in? We're gonna bring in $40,000 in cash. How much cash are we putting out? We're gonna put out $30,000 in cash. So we will have an extra $10,000 coming in versus going out. Now, we know that we certainly wouldn't look at that 10,000 and say, well, these all of these $40,000 bills are equivalent to all of these $30,000 bills. Each one of these is equivalent because it's not. These are $30,001 bills today. This is a series of $5,000 bills over eight years at $5,000 a year. So we certainly know it's not the same money. It's not the same purchasing power because inflation period, never mind a, just a rate of return, just inflation will eat that away. But if we want a certain return, we know these are not equivalent. A naive business person would look at a situation like this and say, well, look, I'm getting 40,000 for a $30,000 investment. This is why uh, a small business or businesses that lack uh, the insight of a management account, or at least a more scientific process to evaluating projects, tend to, to, to really underperform what they could be doing. They're making terrible decisions because they're not considering the time value of money. By the way, the average individual would make this decision. The average individual would make this decision would not consider the time value of money. In fact, even people who understand the time value of money, when they're making decisions for themselves, completely disregard the time value of money in making any of their decisions. 
So in part two is actually kind of a neat little thing to show you that, yeah, it looks good, but when we apply some disciplined management thinking to it, it is not good. Exercise 13.2, the internal rate of return. Billy Brown, owner of Billy's Ice Cream On The Go, is investigating purchasing a new delivery van that would contain a custom-built refrigeration unit. The van would cost $90,000, have an eight-year useful life, and generate cost savings of $15,000 per year compared to the van currently being used. Also, Billy estimates the new van would result in the sale of 2,000 more liters of ice cream each year, which has a contribution margin of $1 per liter required, ignoring taxes of course. Number one, what would be the total annual cash inflows associated with the new van for capital budgeting purposes? So let's just draw our timeline to see what we're doing. We are spending $90,000 today to generate a series of cash flows or, ca or, or cost savings of $15,000 a year all the way through for eight years. So there's number one, we're generating this savings. But it also says that we can sell, because of the existence of this in our business, we can sell another 2,000 liters, which has a contribution margin of a dollar per liter. So we're adding another 2K in incremental contribution margin in cash flow. Now why is this cash flow? Well, we could have said, well, it could have added so much in sales, but then we would have, on the bottom, we would have had, but our cost of goods sold would have been under here. And so, remember, this is net present value. So the $2,000 that we're generating is net. It's the gross sales minus the cost of goods sold contribution margin of 2000 So to answer question number one, there it is right there, 17000 per year, 17 k per year, because number one was... What would be the total annual cash inflows associated with the new van? 17000 Number two, find the IRR promised by the new van rounded to one decimal place. So I'm going to show you how to do it in Excel. I'm not going to do it in Excel. I'm just going to show you how. And then on the calculator. So in Excel, you would enter negative 90000 in the first cell. Then you would enter $17,000 in the next cell. And for the next nine cells down so that you would have 10 entries of $17,000, and there's your array. Then you'd hit equals IRR, and you'd get your brackets. And this, whatever A1 to A11, B2 to B13, whatever uh, uh, cells this spans, you would put them in here. Uh, let's say it, you, you started in A1, and it goes to A11. Uh, you'd put that in there, hit enter, there you go. Remember, the second term in here is a guess. If you don't uh, put a guess in, Excel defaults to point 0.1. So you can enter that into Excel and use this function, or we could use a calculator. So let's see how we do this with a calculator. What are we looking for? Uh, we're looking for uh, the internal rate of return. So what do we know? Well, we know our present value is 90,000. Negative 90,000, there's our present value. Our future value is zero. We know that. $17,000 is our payment. There's our PMT. And eight is our N. And all we need to do now is compute IY. And if we do that, we will get 10.21%. You just enter these things using the present value keys on your calculator. Compute IY, you'll get 10.21%. Nice and simple, right? Number three, now assume that in addition to the cash flows described above, the van will have a $10,000 salvage value at the end of the eight years. Calculate the IRR rounded to one decimal place. Well, how many people think the IRR will be higher? Well, it should be, right? Because now we're modeling another $10,000 of cash flow, but that's at the end of the period. So we could modify uh, our formula here by changing our 17,000 here. I'll just put a little cross here, and we could put $27,000 here. If we just enter $27,000, if we've already entered this formula, we'll get a new IRR number automatically. Excel will automatically recalculate. Or we could recalculate what we've already done here knowing that our PV stays the same, our future value changes to 10,000. 
Our payment stays the same. Our N stays the same. We're going to compute CPTIY. You're leaving everything the same but changing our future value to 10,000 and we will get 11.54%. Is it higher than this? Yes. Should it be higher than this? Yes, because the 10,000 provides cash flow today and it adds roughly about 1.3% to our to our IRR over the full 8 years. There's 13 too.